Everything has changed. It's been nearly a year since the COVID-19 pandemic began, and it's upended the world as we know it. People's lives have been disrupted, and many educators, parents, and students are wondering what to do next. Socioeconomic fault lines have been exposed. We can now see the corrosion exposing weaknesses in our institutions. One of the biggest changes in our mindset is the realization that we no longer need universities to learn. Education is important. School is not. It, the, it, it's not, it's, it, there's no need even to have a college degree at all, uh, or even high school. But, um, I mean, if somebody graduated from a great university, that may, be an indi that may be an indication that they will be capable of great things, but it's not necessarily the case. So what are the new rules for work? Systematic inequalities have come to bear upon our global consciousness as people from a variety of marginalized groups, including working class Americans, take to the streets to demand accountability. With a handful of skilled tech-savvy professionals who found themselves able to work remotely from the comfort of their homes, the contrast has never been stark. As the number of remote workers has doubled, the rules of white-collar work might be changing, and in their favor. New rules of the corporate workplace are being forged as socially conscious, politically aware millennials are more willing to demand a workplace ethos less centered on hierarchy, box ticking, and productivity for productivity's sake. The new rules for work, work as play. Work doesn't have to be boring. Most people work to pay the bills, or they would strive to be discovered, picked, or chosen. Have you ever noticed when you feel unstoppable? Things just happen and it's fun. That is the state of flow. It is where time stands still. You're not operating from a place of limitation, fear, or dread of making a mistake. Play doesn't contain itself. It doesn't have concern for what someone else might be thinking. Just watch any four-year-old play. As we get older, we forget that a mindset of work as play, properly harnessed, with empowering daily habits, can reshape the way that you look at work and how it impacts your life. So that you can fail at what you don't want, so you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. In this state of flow, your actions are effortless, an emotional fuel that carries you through the turbulence of setbacks and missteps as you pursue what matters most to you. Self-education. James Marcus Bach wrote the book, Buccaneer Scholar, and in this book of dangerous ideas, he says, education is not a heap of facts. It's not the hours spent in a classroom or the way we answer test questions. It is not indoctrination, nor worshiping the ancients, nor obedience to authority, not taking anyone's word for what's true, false, vital, or banal. Education is the you who emerges from the learning you do. Systems thinking. We all do systems thinking to some degree. What most people don't know is that it can be learned. System thinking is the ability to perceive underlying simplicity in systems without oversimplifying them. To simplify something, you must understand it. Simple threads make up the fabric of even the most complex subjects. The pattern will be apparent. And even if you're doing it wrong, by the time you figure it out, you'll have learned a tremendous amount. Like an architect or an engineer would view a blueprint. Modeling is one way to float above the abstract and gaze upon the entirety of the problem. Dynamics are how these things interact and change with each other, and through observing changes in the impact of the forces that shape that tapestry. Learn to take breaks. If you're watching this, chances are you're an overachiever. You value hard work, and you might think that if someone is working 50 hours a week, that by working 100, you'll be twice as productive and accomplish twice as much. But that assumes people are like machines. Every hour working after 50 isn't necessarily as productive as the hour before it. We are conditioned to believe that hard work alone means more success. This is a fallacy. In school and work, we pull all-nighters, memorize facts, and consume large quantities of stimulants just to make it through the day. But science is showing us that people are not meant to operate like machines. It may fulfill social and family expectations, but that doesn't mean it adds value to who you are. Not just the old rules of work, but also the old structure for governing is exposing cracks. The old rules of work are based on the nine to five grind designed during the Ford industrial era. Work is now being done at all hours across multiple time zones. It's no wonder people are burnt out, 
coping, addicted, and depressed, with a perspective that more hours somehow equals greater value. The energy required to solve problems can become all-consuming and lead to health consequences. Generally, we teach our children that it's more important to put in the time than to acquire value from the time that we invest. Love it or leave it. What if we focused on who to be, and from out of our being comes the actions, and out of that action, we have our results. This simple syntax shift in the way that you view work can guide you toward finding what makes you most fulfilled. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Maybe not in the way that you think. It is assumed that the future is about jobs. Protesters demand jobs. Politicians run on a platform of jobs. The exponential growth of technology has disrupted everyday work functions across multiple sectors. We intuitively know that jobs have evolved to a greater extent in the last 100 years, more than at any other time in history. Lifelong pensions and to a large degree worker rights have eroded. Jobs of the future most likely will be man plus machine collaboration. Workers with technical skill sets will see the greatest demand. Workers of the past worked one to two jobs in their lifetime, whereas today's generation of workers have greater expectations, shorter attention span, and live with a greater sense of personal and social purpose. Many workers today are switching between multiple employers, many working on several projects at once. What parents and grandparents of today consider a job will undergo a dramatic shift in the coming machine age. And this is not to say that jobs will go away entirely. Quite the contrary. Jobs will evolve and adapt. However, the focus for our children should be more on work and less on jobs. Decentralized teams of knowledge workers working from anywhere seems like a dream. However, technology isn't the main limitation. It's us. The human condition is the bottleneck. Everything we teach children should prepare them to work alongside machines while instilling a sense of responsibility for building a sustainable planet for future generations. The AI revolution is just getting started. Urban millennials are a generation known for their skepticism of neoliberal capitalism and blind consumerism, and they're generally more aware of their rights as employees and are more willing to assert them when they deem necessary. In fact, after years of resistance, even Google is facing organized labor. Prior to the pandemic, millennials were flocking to startups and socially oriented jobs in numbers unseen in previous generations. As work shifts to decentralization, away from concentrated hierarchy, it will become important for leaders to ensure that all their employees are on the same page. At the same time, millennials will demand greater transparency from both their leaders and the business models utilized by their companies. As international teams working across different time zones on the same projects, the reorganization of information architecture is going to be a necessity. The mundane drudgery of administration and project assessment could one be taken over by AI, freeing up the company's human resources to engage in more creative work. As human knowledge and expertise become the most expensive cost for competing employers, employee sharing could be a model for the future of employment. Much like how Uber car rides are shared, employers might split the cost of hiring some of the world's most highly skilled engineers, marketers, and technologists on alternating schedules. A potential collaborator's track record can now be verified by a blockchain smart contract. Our technology is evolving so rapidly that our culture is struggling to catch up. The coronavirus has exposed the cracks in our global economic model. But the challenge it's presented has become fertile ground for more decentralized, human-centric organizational models to emerge. As AI, 5G, and blockchain continue to leap forward and more services migrate online for public safety reasons, employers must learn to keep a mindset malleable. Calls for diversity and social justice springing forth from America have rippled through the developed world. As developing economies begin to bounce back from the pandemic and join the digitally connected global workforce, an inclusive mindset will be all that more important. Even as the virus was used as a vehicle for diversion, polarization, and scapegoating, members of the global village stuck together to defend democratic values and to call for greater inclusiveness of historically disenfranchised communities. As the vaccine rollout brings hopeful end of the pandemic, the old rules of the workplace simply aren't coming back. The future is gradually entering our line of sight, and it will be in the hands of those brave enough to seize it and shrewd enough to recognize its rules. Yet there's still a fetishism with the golden days of old, a time gone by that is becoming less relevant to future generations, as healthcare, aging parents, student debt, 
and AI radically disrupt our work and society. Dissatisfaction with the status quo is welling up with youth and future generations. Centralized hierarchy is becoming disintermediated by systems that use AI to present a personalized view of reality, depending on what you click. What comes next? Beyond the socialism, capitalism, class warfare tropes, what are some practical steps one must consider in this postmodern age? The concepts of education have been long rooted in tradition. We call these work sounds. Education is useful to the extent that it is immediately applicable to your life. YouTube today remains as either one of the most useful time wasters or accelerators to acquiring new skills and knowledge on demand. Preparing for a world that no longer exists is the old formula. We have an obligation to prepare students and workers for a future that is moving fast. There is no right or wrong path. For some, traditional education is the right path. Maybe if you like school, it's fun, stay with it. For others, they may be more inclined to forge their own path as an entrepreneur. In either case, the way we learn needs to shift from a cognitive understanding to a nervous system level understanding. A nervous system level education is experiential, not just a comprehension of facts, but a knowing in your body. It's about leaving the building, applying learning to the real world outside of the theoretical realm in order to get feedback. There's a growing awareness from the work hard crowd of the illusion of meritocracy, that sadly the playing field is not fair. If you grew up with a father figure in the home, take two steps forward if you had access to a private education. Learning through challenges teaches us more. It's the difference when your money or your time or maybe your neck is on the line. There is simply no compression algorithm for experience. There's a greater growth trajectory by making mistakes and by taking chances, which makes you more resilient when there's disruptive change. I often wonder how our world would look with a more personalized education system, one that uses the sophistication that some employers use to find the right fit for the right job. Personality assessments designed for children to gather insights on strength, motivation, and temperament. Experiential teaching based on iterative experience and risk taking. Students are given consequential responsibility, guided by mentors and allowed to make mistakes with certain safeguards in place. No longer sheltering students from the important feedback of failure, rejection, discipline, and the power of intrinsically motivated pursuits. To be sustainable, lifelong education was shipped into a positive neuroassociation, fostered as desire, drawn up from the wellspring of one's curiosity and pursuits. This channel takes an unconventional view on the future of work and learning. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and leave a comment.